All right, I'd like to invite you guys to enjoy another in the Anglican TV interview series that we started up at the end here of 2020. And I have Bishop Andy Lines from, boy, you have a new title now. It used to be Missionary Bishop of England. It's now a Missionary Bishop of Europe as well. Uh, well, that, I think, was always the intention at the time of uh, my consecration. So yeah. it was designed... Uh, to meet whatever needs there were in this needy continent. Yeah, it is. Um, it's it's amazing because uh, we know that England is, is hard ground to plant churches, to recultivate uh, the gospel. The one thing I can think of that's more difficult than England would be Europe. And I was not surprised. I was very pleased when the GAFCON primates made this move. But what are some, when they say, Andy, we're going into Europe, what are you, were your initial thoughts? Well, um, perhaps I w I, I'm, an, I'm aware of my own uh, very strong limitations and indeed our own. We're, we are not a big player. So, uh, and there are other players mm -hmm. in the field, including uh, uh, perfectly orthodox groups like the Reformed Episcopal Churches in Germany and Croatia, and mm -hmm. uh, many of the congregations from the uh, Diocese of Gibraltar in Europe, which is the Church of England Diocese, and then there's the Free Church also have churches there. So it's not as if we're the only players, but um, I spent some 18 years uh, from 2000 leading a mission society called Crosslinks and uh, one of the big features of those 18 years was a steady move under God from a focus very much on East Africa uh, working with the Anglican churches there continuing to do that but in a different way so supporting much more local leadership um, but we just had to take account of the 730 million people uh, in Europe, um, most of whom do not have a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And although England is tough, and indeed UK is tough, we are generally um, better off in terms of uh, the numbers of Christians and the proportion of Christians uh, who do have a living relationship uh, than almost any country in Europe. But I wasn't um, surprised, perhaps, because um, uh, the Lord in his goodness saw a uh, fit that through crosslinks a good number of people went out, not all to work with Anglican churches, uh, but uh, to get stuck in uh, as the Lord led. Well, I think England, uh, England, the UK is different than Europe in, uh, I think, the biggest way. And the UK, the mother church is actively working against you they don't want to see the success of GAFCON or Orthodox Ang uh, Anglicanism on the shores there. Whereas Europe, you don't have anybody working against you. You're working with other teams that are already on the ground. And I think you can have more advantage advantages than you do where you are now. Um, what is I would the just want to come in on that though, Kevin, sure. and say that um, many uh, GAFCON supporters, many of those who agree with the Jerusalem Declaration, in fact, the vast majority mm -hmm. are within the Church of England. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there are brothers and sisters working there. Uh, so it's not as if I see them as uh, as the enemy. No, uh, I, 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 it's more the leadership structures, you know, than the, 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 uh, the, the, the active uh, Orthodox within the Mother Church. Um, no, I agree with that. What are uh, some of the things that you're initially going to be doing now in uh, Europe? Um, well, we're really making contact with um, the, 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 a number of people at the Amy launch on mm -hmm. Monday. Uh, we had people, I noticed, from Sweden. Um, actually, those were former Crosslinks contacts of mine who are church planting in the um, area now around uh, Stockholm. Um, and we had people from Portugal. We have uh, uh, we had people on the call from Germany. So and uh, currently we're in discussions with a, a Hungarian uh, minister. So we we've got plenty enough to do in terms of just pursuing those initial contacts um, and the many contacts that I have from my previous times with Crosslinks. But I think the the principal thing 
uh, which we actually started yesterday. We had our first Anglican Network uh, Standing Committee with a completely new that we'd not met before. Yes, yeah, so we opened uh, Psalm 117 uh, as the beginning of our meeting, and uh, uh, I thought, well, let's focus on countries in Europe, just keep our, uh, us remembering what we're about. We're not about structures, we're not about um, uh, the sort of um, nitty-gritty of what we have to do for, um, to keep a, a network up and running, although there's plenty of that. So we ended up uh, praying for Albania, so I mm -hmm. dug out some... Uh, statistics from uh, Operation World and uh, we prayed for Albania and uh, particularly the hundred thousand or so Albanians and Kosovans who are uh, in the UK but we do need to pay attention uh, to those who are in Albania and Kosovo. Indeed so from the initial beginning here uh, you're doing a launch uh, you said Monday? So we um, had the Anglican Mission in England launch uh, mm -hmm. this last Monday. That was their formal launch as a convocation right. yeah. of the Anglican network. Mm -hmm. um, uh, hitherto, although many, most people have described me as the Amy Bishop, I have not actually been because I remain until the end of this year a bishop in the Anglican Church in North America, mm -hmm. and particularly linked with the Anglican network in Canada. Um, and um, therefore, I've only had informal links since I stopped being the uh, uh, General Secretary of the Anglican Mission. So Lee um, is, is now working much more formally with me um, as their convocation bishop. So that was this Monday. And in Monday, on Monday, the 11th of January, uh, the other convocation, uh, called the Anglican Convocation in Europe, ACE, of which Philip, in your previous interview, uh, is one of the uh, clergy. Uh, that will have a formal commissioning um, stroke launch, which marks the end of their connection uh, formally with the Anglican Church in North America. So hitherto, they have had that formal link, uh, whereas the Anglican Mission hasn't. And so they will launch on the 11th of um, January, Lord willing. And then on the 1st of February, uh, the network will do something as well uh, to mark its beginning. Okay, well, we're in COVID times. Is there a place people can go and watch this uh, yep. uh, live? Um, uh, well, yes. The, uh, the plans are still in the offing for those two launches coming up. But there are YouTube um uh, recordings of the recorded elements of the Anglican Mission one from mm. this last Monday. We we did a combination of um, Zoom where we had about 230 people on on Zoom, um, or at least 230 screens, uh, and that enabled us to break up and to be in uh, small groups for prayer, as well as watching together a um, a pre-recorded celebration. That's great. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the UK again. Uh, at GAFCON 2, uh, uh, Peter Jensen said, we want to go into England. We want to retake the shores for Christ. It's been difficult. What are some of the biggest difficulties you've had uh, in, in the UK? Um, well, I think there are, are various uh, difficulties that um, have had to be overcome and one of them is is the very fact of having um a, a reforming movement like gafcon which has um people taking uh, different uh tactical and strategic uh decisions or approaches and uh, with uh social media and things like that that has led to some fairly strong um, impressions of how things were going or how we viewed other groups. I think what we have seen this year is that the Lord has given us um, a much greater degree of, uh, of support. So I'm uh, indicating my support for those brothers and sisters who are struggling within the Church of England. Um, and they, I hope, are um, indicating as well their support for those uh, that I'm looking after who needed the help. Um, they've been needing it for some time. It's not a new uh, a new phenomenon. 
so we, we go back a number of years. So that would be one difficulty. I think sinfulness uh, is a, a pretty major difficulty. And uh, I've been promising uh, the folk who are now part of the Anglican network in Europe that uh, sadly we don't leave our sinfulness in whether it's the Scottish Episcopal Church, the Church in Wales, or the Church of England, uh, we bring it with us. And yeah. uh, so it, it's not as if it's all going to be smooth sailing from now. No, so those are, those are two difficulties. Yeah, well, that, but the good side is the uh, Church of England leadership itself is falling apart. They need the Reformation. They need what you're offering. Uh, there's so many clergy that have uh, bishops who are inattentive to... Uh, their churches and to their flocks and uh, it's wonderful to see a godly presence return to um, areas of England that really need it badly and uh, we, well, yeah, that, really you're pretty. right there are of course exceptions as the, as there always will be in, sure. in terms of leadership um, but um, uh, it's been one of the striking things that I have found is that um, most people have not got a positive experience of episcopacy uh, and so we are, in many ways, starting from scratch because de facto many of the congregations have almost been congregationalists mm -hmm. because they've not had any help. In fact, they've had hindrance often uh, from uh, the formal structures um, and uh, a liberal hierarchy. Uh, and so they've had to basically... Um, uh, high, uh, well, look, look to themselves and keep themselves going and do that in networks. Uh, so that has been a, a, a major feature and it's something that uh, I think both ACE and the Anglican Mission in England, Amy, um, uh, will, I mean, it'll be an exciting journey because we're looking to um, not replicate everything that has, we perhaps have experienced in the past and to have... Um, a, a genuine oversight and a recognition of that oversight as well. I want to thank you for your time. We had initially done this, I think, about a year ago, and we had we uh, technical crazy. yeah, and we had technical <laughs> issues on my side. Last week, you were, you were going to join the uh, other gentleman uh, from the UK when we did a joint interview, and it just didn't work. We now have wonderful broadband, and I, I want to thank you for uh, joining me for this uh, uh, quick Anglican TV interview. Thank you, Kevin. Good to speak to you.